We have now started to build our basic rig. It has two limbs, both with IK and FK functionality, and the ability to blend between the two states. If you want to see how these were built, then please check out the previous video in this series. Even though we can pose the hand and the foot, we can't do anything else with them, so it makes sense for us to now look into rigging those. So in this video, we will look at adding controls to the fingers and also the metacarpal joints we added previously to give the hand much more flexibility. Let's start by adding the main finger controls. We want to give the animator the ability to pose the fingers, but as mentioned previously, we don't want them to have access to the base skeleton. Let's hide the model for now. We only really need it as a guide for joint placement. And as we already have the joints built, we don't need to see it at this stage. So let's build a control which we can duplicate and use for each segment of the finger. I'm going to go to Create, NURBS Primitives, Circle to begin with. Now I'm not going to just use a circle, instead I want a lollipop kind of shape. So we have a stick coming from the joint, but with a head on it, which will make it easier to see and select. So for the stick part, I'm going to use the Edit Point Curve tool and make sure the curve degree is set to linear. This will mean I can create a straight line with just two points. I'm going to hold down X, which will restrict the point placement to the grid, add two points and press Enter to finish. This gives us two curves, but we only really want one. But we can easily combine them, as I showed you previously, using a bit of metal. Right click in the outliner and select Shapes so we can see the shape nodes. Now open the script editor. Select the curve shape one node and then the nerve circle one curve and use parent minus S minus R. This will parent the stick's shape node to the circle's transform node, combining them. You can now delete the Curve 1 Transform node as it's no longer needed. As you can see, both shape nodes are now under the same transform, essentially making just one icon. Let's rename all these now and to keep things clean. We will just call them Lollipop for now, as the name will change as we start to add them to the rig. We don't need to see the shape nodes anymore, so let's hide them again. At the moment, the pivot is at the world root, which is in the center of the circle. We need it to be at the base of the stick. So press insert, which will allow you to edit the pivot point, and then holding X, snap it to the grid point at the end of the stick. Now that's done, we can scale it down. And holding V this time, snap it to the first joint of the index finger. Let's group it now, as I do with all my controls, to give it an offset group, and let's rename those. I'm using the same name as the joint, but adding underscore CTRL for the control and then underscore offset to the group. This again keeps things tidy and allows you to quickly identify them. All we need to do now is make sure the control matches the orientation of the joint. So select the offset group and go to constrain parent. Just reset the settings. We don't want to maintain the offset, so let's disable that and click apply. Uh, okay, where's it gone? Oh, well, I know what's happened. I didn't update the pivot point on the offset group. So let's undo that and select the offset group, press insert and holding V, snap it to the joint. If we apply the constraint again, yep, that works. Now don't worry if your control isn't rotated the right way. The main thing is that the offset group now has the correct orientation, so we can correct the control without worrying about any rotation values being added. You can do this a couple of ways. You can select the curve points and then rotate them around the base pivot. If you hold J, 
it will snap the rotation so you can get more precise angles. Or an easy way to do it is to just rotate the control. Again, holding J to snap the rotation. In fact, this is probably a quicker way to be honest. Let's scale this down. That looks about right. And then freeze the transforms. Because we have the offset group, the transforms can be reset without affecting the overall orientation. That's one control done, so let's duplicate that and snap it to the other joints in the index finger. Let's also rename those. Because we want this to work in FK, forward kinematics, let's parent the lower controls to the others. Or should I say parent the lower controls offset groups to the other controls, just to create the, uh, the correct hierarchy. And again, we'll use a parent constraint to make sure the offset groups are orientated and positioned correctly to match each of the joints. You will see that some have become misaligned, so doing this just ensures everything is where it should be. So that's the index finger controls done, and as you can see, you can rotate them and they work nicely. Before we move on, let's also change the color. We will be duplicating these controls for other digits, so doing it now just means that we won't have to go through and manually change them all later. So I'm just going to drawing overrides and selecting enable overrides. Let's make it green. Now the child objects will automatically inherit the same color, but I'm just going to go through and update them anyway. This just means that if I need to unparent one later and use it for something else, it will still have the same color. I'm just going to bring back the model to make sure the controls are visible and not hidden inside the geometry. Yeah, that lo looks okay. We now have one finger set up with the controls, so let's duplicate those and snap them to the base of the other fingers. and then quickly rename them. With that done, all we need to do is just use more parent constraints to make sure each offset group is orientated correctly. We only need two controls for the thumb, so let's get rid of number three and those parent constraint nodes too. Remember to delete them once the orientation has been corrected, because they're no longer used. I'll just repeat that for the other fingers, adding and then removing the parent constraints to get the correct positions and orientations. Remember you can press G to repeat the last command, so in this case it will quickly apply the parent constraint for you. Now all the controls are in the right positions, we can use more parent constraints, but this time to make the controls drive the joints. So these won't be deleted. So this time round, select each control and then the joint, and then apply a parent constraint. As you can see, we can now use the controls to rotate and pose the finger joints.
Even though the finger controls are in now and working, we need them to follow the hand position. At present, if we use the arm control to move the arm, the fingers would just stay where they are. So let's select all of the finger offset groups and group them. Now press insert and holding V, snap the pivot point to the wrist joint. Actually, that won't work because we need to make sure the new group has the same orientation as the wrist joint. So let's just go back. Let's create an empty group this time and simply parent constrain it to the wrist. And delete the parent constraint node. That's better. Let's now rename that to L underscore hand to indicate it's the left hand and then parent the finger controls to that. As you can see, the finger controls will now rotate around the wrist, which is exactly what we want. We just need to make sure the left hand group follows the wrist, so we can use another parent constraint to achieve that. So now we can use the left arm IK control to rotate and position the hand and the finger controls will follow it. Because we parent constrain their left hand group to the wrist joint, we can also blend between IK and FK and the hand controls will follow. Let's just move the hand group now into the base controls group, again to keep things tight. So that's the finger controls done, so let's now take a look at setting up the metacarpal joints. Yes, you could just use the same process we used on the fingers and add an extra FK control for the metacarpal joints, but instead let's look at a more intuitive approach. So rather than relying on rotations and adding yet another control for the animators to use, why don't we use the base finger controls translations to drive the metacarpal joints? This sounds simple enough, and if we move the control now, it looks like this is already happening, right? Let's display the local rotational axes and take a closer look at what's happening. As you can see, when I move the control up, the connection between the joints is maintained, but the metacarpal joint isn't actually rotating. The rotational axis isn't affected. What this means is once the model is skinned, moving these controls up will have no effect on the model at the base of the hand, and it won't deform correctly. So we need to find a way to make the metacarpal joints rotate when the base finger controls are translated. When I was originally looking for a solution into this, I used IK handles to make sure the joints always pointed to the base of the fingers. However, after testing, I found that this was unstable and the IK tended to flip in certain positions. So instead, I opted to use trusty old utility nodes to get the job done. These were a lot more stable. So let's open the node editor. and add the metacarpal joint and the first index finger control. Let's open these up so we can see the translate attributes on the control and the rotate attributes on the joint. So we know we want the translations to control the rotations. So in this instance, we need the Y translation to adjust the Z rotation on the joint. We could connect these directly and it would work, but if I move the control, the joint doesn't appear to be rotating. As you can see, the Y axis should stay pointing towards the root joint. This is because the translate value is so small, it's only affecting the rotation in a tiny way. We need a way to increase that value. 
Press Tab and then start to type the word Multiply, and then select Multiply Divide from the drop down box. As you've seen previously, this can be used to multiply one value by another, and then you can connect the results to an attribute. Connect Translate X to Input 1X, and then Output X to Rotate Z. At the moment, it's just multiplying the value by 1, so we are just getting the same output. If we adjust that value, we can see the joint starting to rotate. Let's round that off to around minus 640. So let's hide the other rotational axes for now, so we can concentrate on just this one. As you can see now, as I adjust the control, the metacarpal rotates and follows correctly. It looks like we need to make the Z translation drive the X rotation. So connect Translate X to Input 1Z and then Output 1Z to Rotate X. Again, we need to adjust the input value to set how much the translate should be multiplied by. Let's copy the first value, but instead we'll remove the minus. I know that for this to work, the value needs to be positive. Yeah, that works well. We have one more attribute we can work with, and that's the Y rotation of the metacarpal joint but it would make sense for that to mimic the rotation of the control rather than the translation. So connect Rotate Y to Input 1Y and Output Y to Rotate Y. We haven't opted for a direct connection this time because, as you can see, when I rotate the control, the metacarpal rotates at the same amount, and for this joint it's far too much. So using the multiply divide node again gives us the flexibility to reduce the amount it rotates. This time let's set it something like 0.25. Now as it rotates the joint is affected but only slightly. Now this may not be completely realistic but it's another option you can give the animator especially if they are working on a cartoon character where they need more flexibility. If the animator doesn't need this, they can simply set the input 2y value to 0. With that in mind, you don't want the animator to be digging around in the rig. So what we can do is take these values and connect them to a custom attribute, which can be edited and even animated on a per character basis. Let's add some to the left arm control, as this is a global control. Or alternatively, if you want these on a per finger basis, you could add them to the first controls on each finger. Go to Modify, Add Attribute. First, let's add a divider, which helps to section out the attributes and make the channel box easier to read. Let's call this Meta underscore Offset. Now set this as an enum which gives you a drop down box. Select blue and delete the name, which will remove that option and then rename green to be a series of underscores to create a line. Add the attribute and then right click on it 
and lock it and also make it non-keyable too. So there we have sort of a heading if you like. Now let's add the attributes we need and these can just be floats. Let's add x underscore translate, z underscore translate and y underscore rotate. You need to add underscores in the name because it won't accept a space. I'm just going to transfer those attributes across. And let's bring the left arm control into the node editor too. We now need to connect those new attributes to the multiply divide node so we have easier access to those values. Connect x translate to input 2x. Y rotate to input 2y and z translate to input 2z. Those are now connected and we can then edit the metacarpal values for all the fingers with just these three values. Let's just rename this before we move on so we know what it's being used for. Maybe left hand meta offset. Or control, control is better. Although thinking about it, this is only going to affect the index finger. So let's update the name to reflect that. We're going to need a multiply divide node per finger anyway, so it seems silly to call it hand. So that's one finger set up. Now we just need to repeat the process for all the others. I'll just speed up the video here. Now when it comes to the thumb, it looks like the values we used for the fingers won't work. So let's add more attributes just to control the thumb metacarpal. So following exactly the same process, add a divider attribute called thumb underscore meta. Make sure you lock it and make it unkeyable too. Now add the three main attributes as before, but this time add an underscore to the end of each name. You can't have two attributes of the same name on the same node, but adding an underscore gets around this. Oops, my air crashed. Thankfully, I had an autosave enabled. Okay, let's connect these new attributes up first. Just be sure to select the right ones 
because they now look the same. The easy way to spot them is they are the ones with no current connections. Connect X translate to the input 2X attribute on the thumb meta multiply divide node, the Y rotate to input 2Y and Z translate to input 2Z. Now those are connected, let's copy the main values across as a starting point. We can now work on the thumb independently of the fingers. You can see when I move the control up the Y axis is way off. So I'm just going to adjust the X translate value to line it up. And I'll copy that value to the Z translate as we did with the fingers, but remove the minus. That's much better. So there we now have full control of the metacarpal joints and we can also pose the fingers. Time to just do some cleanup. We don't need the scale attributes on the controls, so let's select and then lock and hide those. Obviously, if you're working on a rig where you do need to scale the fingers, then don't get rid of the scale attributes. And let's also get rid of those rotational axes. At the moment we have a good basic hand rig. The animator can pose the fingers and thumb quite easily. The problem is, to create a fist can take a while, especially if you need to do it over and over again. What we're going to do next is use set driven keys to create a simple attribute driven pose, meaning the animator can achieve a fist in the blink of an eye. To access the set driven keys window, you need to be in the animation menu set and then go to Key, Set Driven Keys and open the options. Now Set Driven Keys add keyframes onto the nodes, so creating them directly onto the controls won't work. We need to keep them as clean as possible. The same can be said of the offset groups. They have a job to do and adding keys onto them will just make the rig unstable. So let's add another layer of groups between the controls and the offset groups. These will only be driven by the Set Driven Keys keeping them separated from the rest of the rig. Select each control for the index finger and group it. Because these groups lie beneath the offset groups, they automatically inherit the correct orientations. Press insert and while holding V, snap the group's pivot to the joint. Now let's rename these groups. Let's add pose to the end as these are used to pose the fingers.
Okay, let's now repeat that for all the other fingers and the thumb. With those added, select all the new pose groups and click Load Driven in the Set Driven Key window. Select all the groups in the left side and in the right select the Rotate Attributes as they are the ones which will be keyed. So we now need something to drive these attributes and it makes sense to add the attribute to the left arm control just as we did with the metacarpal controls. First let's create another divider just as we did before. Open the attribute window and set the data type to enum. Let's call this one pose as it will have all the poses we defined beneath it and get rid of the blue option and rename the green so it looks like a line. Now we can add a basic float attribute. Let's make this one the fist control. This time we are also defining a minimum and maximum value too. So the animator can scrub between the fist being active or not. One being active, zero being not. Now click the load driver in the set driven key window and select the fist attribute. So we know that when the fist attribute is zero, we want the hand to be relaxed as it is now. So let's store this pose by clicking key. As you can see, the pose group's rotation attributes are now tagged as having keys. We now need to work on the fist pose, but first change the fist attribute to one. You don't want to accidentally set the posed fingers at zero. Now this is really important. You don't want to edit the actual controls. You have to work on just the pose groups. An easy way to work is to select the controls and then press the up arrow on the keyboard, which will pick walk up the hierarchy and select the pose groups for you. So we just need to adjust the pose of the fingers, and this could be done once the character has been skinned, so you get a better fit for the fist. Although, once set up you can go back and adjust the keys in the graph editor. Just do the thumb now. Yep, that looks okay. So to store that pose, we just hit key again. Now we can adjust the fist attribute and the hand animates for us. The issue now is everything folds in at the same time. So you may end up with the thumb passing through the fingers. Let's close the SDK window and open the graph editor. So if we select the pose groups for the thumb, we can see the keys associated with the fist attribute. What we can do is select the keys at zero and give them an offset, maybe just 0.1, so the thumb won't start to move until the fist attribute hits 0.1, giving the fingers chance to get ahead. So if we try that, you will see there is now a very slight delay. It's maybe a bit too subtle though.
Let's adjust the pinky now too. Again, selecting the pose groups first and adding a slight offset to the start of the animation. OK, let's try something a little more drastic and interesting. So maybe the fingers curling in all at different times. So let's set these three fingers to 0.1. Now the two outer fingers to maybe 0.15. and the pinky to 0.2. So that's a bit more interesting as we're getting more of a wave as the fingers curl out. Let's adjust the thumb again. So that's better, there's more of a delay now so the thumb can curl in on top of the fingers. Now the beauty of this setup is because we added the set driven keys to the pose groups, you can use the fist attribute but then continue to tweak the fingers with the controls. Finally, we just need to clean up the rig and lock off any attributes we don't want the animator to touch. In the outliner, type pose into the search bar. We can then easily select all the pose groups. Now let's select all the attributes and right click and go to lock and hide selected. If the animator now accidentally pick walks up, they won't be able to edit or add keys to the pose groups. Let's now do the same with the offset groups. Oops, quickly fix that name. So again, select all the offset groups and lock and hide them. Now the animator only has access to the controls. And there we have the basic hand rig. Plus you have control over the metacarpal joints and the ability to quickly pose it using a fist attribute. And obviously you could now add as many poses as you like, maybe a point or a thumbs up, whatever your character does the most. So that's the hand rig done. Next we will take a look at adding a rig to the foot. And this will include all the basics like a foot roll, toe twist, foot bank and so on. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you have, please let me know in the comments below. Also let me know if you have any questions and also tell me what future videos you would like to see. As always, remember to like this tutorial and subscribe to my channel to keep up to date with future videos. This is AntCGI signing off and I will see you on the next one.